CataractCoach.com. Don't place the phacal probe in the center of the nucleus. No, no, no. Embed the phacal probe just inside the subincisional capsular rexus. Why is that? Well, remember, to achieve a great chomp, you want to have at least a little bit of distance between the phacal probe tip and the chopper. In fact, the more distance you have between the two, the better your chop's going to be. So let's show you this whole case, start to finish. It's only five minutes, hang in there. We're gonna show you how I achieved this chop right off the bat. So here's the main incision, let's see how I create it. Hitting those limbal vessels, just barely nicking them, good tunnel length, entering the eye, that looks pretty clean. Now for a good chop technique, don't make a baby rexus. You need to have at least about a five millimeter capsule rexus. Four and a half is okay, five and a half is okay. The sweet spot is somewhere about five millimeters in diameter. Now this patient doesn't have the biggest pupil, it's tolerable, and so we'll create this rexus just about at the pupil margin. Again, it's about a five millimeter pupil, so there you go, a five millimeter capsule rexus. Now before doing the chop, you need to have good hydrodissection. So here's the BSS on a blunt cannula, 27 gauge cannula, and we're getting a few fluid waves, that looks great. Look at the main incision, we've lost some viscoelastic. Now we'll spin the nucleus, because remember, if it does not spin, you will not win. And there we go, injecting more dispersant to protect that central corneal endothelium. Here comes the good part. Putting the phaco probe in the eye, watch where I place it, bevel down. Not in the center of the nucleus. No, no, no. Look, sub-incisional, chopper far away, and now you've got a chop. And spend a little bit of time here to separate the two halves. Fully separated now. The chopper holds one piece away while the other piece is brought up, and then we can sub-chop it again, and it's, that's it. I mean, this is an easy case now. So using this technique, we can make short work of this nucleus. Again, the whole case is going to be about five minutes. Not about speed, it's about efficiency, how little time we're in the eye, how little phaco energy put in the eye, how little fluid goes through the eye. Here's the second half of the nucleus already. We've sub it again into smaller pieces, and we can emulsify those, or as you know I like to say, wolf them down, just get them done. And taking out of the eye, chop in that safe position to protect the posterior capsule, and we are all done with nucleus removal. Gosh, not even three minutes into the case. Now we'll clean it up. So, you know, the key here again is placement of your instruments. To achieve that first chop, the phaco probe is going to go just inside that sub-incisional capsular rexus. And the chopper is going to go opposite just inside the capsular rexus as well. So therefore, if you have a 5 millimeter rexus, your instruments, your phaco chopper and the phaco tip are about four and a half, maybe five millimeters apart. And that allows you to bring them together and create a good chop, a good cleavage plane to separate the two halves and really get two distinct hemi-nuclear pieces out of that one nucleus. And then the rest is easy. So here, finishing up the case, the, lens, the new lens is gonna go in the capture bag, single piece acrylic lens, monofocal lens. This patient's a little bit of a hyperope, I think the lens is like a 23 or 23 and a half diopter lens. We're aiming for a plano refractive outcome. This patient was thrilled. We're in the eye for such a brief period of time that there's really minimal inflammation. Now at the end here, going behind the eye wall, remove the viscoelastic, and you'll see as the lens goes back into position, we have a nice overlap. So that five millimeter rexus is nicely overlapping for 360 degrees, that six millimeter optic. We can take out our viscoelastic here at the end of the case and finish it up, and it all goes great. So remember, one of the main problems I see with the residents who are trying to learn phaco chop is the phaco probe is in the center of the nucleus and the choppers in the center of the nucleus. And so you've got a millimeter or less between the two instruments, and that's just not going to work. It's going to make it much more difficult. So to do this combo chop technique that I've shown you here in this video, or a horizontal chop technique for that matter, you really wanna have a significant distance between the phaco ch uh, chopper and the phaco probe tip. So again, phaco probe tip goes sub-incisional just inside the caps rexus, not in the center of the nucleus. And the chopper is opposite, just inside the opposite 
rim of the capsular axis. You bring the two instruments together, achieve that chop, and the rest of the case is easy. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.